his testimony and about what God has done in his life. I don't know, Brandon and, and, and came to me, in, I don't know, a couple months ago, three months ago, something like that. And uh, I feel like Brandon has been here for everybody. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so um, we, uh, let's, just, let's just pray for Brandon. Father, we thank you for Brandon. Yes. Father, we thank you that he is a willing and obedient vessel. Father, I thank you that your plan has already been laid out before him in his life. You said the book is already written with his story. And Father, I thank you that Brandon is just hooking up with you, God, and what you want. And he's saying yes, Lord. I thank you that he doesn't have to have it all figured out. But Lord, I thank you that you've got it figured out. I thank you that provision is there for him. I thank you, Lord, that his words are anointed. And, Father, I thank you that he is yielded to you. And I thank you that your blood has covered him. And, Father, we thank you for the words that you're going to use right now to change our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so, isn't it great to be a part of a church that, from the pastor to the people who pick out the music that God's just moving because even the music is lined up with what I want to talk about today. Um, because the beautiful name song, um, it says that you can't earn it. You can't, you, you don't deserve it. And we don't, we don't. Um, but I want to, I want to talk a little bit about, a little bit about my life. Um, I, like a lot of people here, um, went to church when I was younger. I felt called to the ministry at a young age, um, was prayed for, prophesied for, and I let a lot of shame keep me from doing what God's called me to do. And so last week at the party that um, <coughs> Imagine that we had. There was a lady there, and when I was talking to Shane about some stuff, this lady had just kind of heard a little bit about my story, and she gave me a hug, and she just said that there's always a place in the kingdom of God for you, and I want to make sure that everyone here today knows that, you know what, I've, I'm not perfect. If y'all looking for someone perfect, you're not looking for me. Um, I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. Um, but God's moving in my life. Yes. And so there's actually a couple of scriptures that I want to kind of touch on. Um, the, the main one is going to be uh, Romans 3.23. And that's that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But, but, what's so great about that is we have a God who will move in our life, who, no matter what, he loves us. Um, Romans 8, 39 says that there's, there's no height, no depth. There, there's nothing that you can do <coughs> that can pull you from the love of God. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Come on. Um, I have... In the shame that I I had, I have quit going to church. Um, It took me years to get back plugged into a church. And then I plugged into a church that I thought was right. And it was just a stepping stone to where I'm at now. Because doors have opened up here for things that God's been moving in my life. Things that God's been stirring inside of me for so long. And it was because of God's grace. Because a year ago from... I, and I've talked to a couple of the people here. A year ago from where I'm at now, I had nothing. I had no car. I was walking to work. I had nothing. And I went unemployed for four months, lost my house. Um, but in a year's time, I have a car that I shouldn't have. I have a job that I have two jobs. Two jobs. <laughs> Doors have been opening for me to start. A nonprofit ministry that I have. Um, and in the first time in probably 
eight years, seven, eight years, I'm able to sit at a church, I'm able to stand at the church and speak without any kind of a shame, without any kind of a fear that this isn't what I'm supposed to do. Because God gave me a verse this morning when Scott was saying something and Madge said something. Um, but Acts 10, 15 says, do not call unclean what I have called clean. Oh, no. and I tell you, there's nobody in here. There's nobody in this church. There's nobody outside of this church. There's nobody sitting in a jail cell. There's nobody sitting in rehab that God cannot touch. Yes. yes. God loves everybody. Yes, the, the Bible says, whosoever will. Whosoever will. And so, I just, part of my testimony is that through what I have been through, which I, I, it took me a long time to figure out how I'm going to get 23 years of life in 10 minutes. I don't know how I'm going to do that. But, um, you know, there, there's been a lot of issues. Um, I have been homeless. I have slept in my car. I have slept in abandoned buildings. I have done things that I shouldn't have done. But, but, but God, but God, it's what it is, but God. It doesn't matter where you're at in your life. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what, what sin you committed last time. Guess what? God's covered it. God covered it a long time ago. God covered it at the cross. And it doesn't matter who you think you are. It doesn't matter what the voices inside your head are telling you. Not only does God love you, but God will use you. Mm -hmm. right. We all have a story. We all have a past. Mm -hmm. But so did the 12 disciples that Jesus used. Yeah, that's true. So did Paul, who murdered Christians, yeah. and God changed his life. Yeah. And he became one of the biggest he, he, he wrote half the New Testament Bible. Yeah. God will use you where you're at, around the people that you're right. surrounded with. You just have to be that willing vessel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm super excited for the next chapter of my life um, because God's, God's moving. God's moving. And it's fantastic to be able to look back on the things that I've done. Um, and I was able to actually tell, um, me and Scott talked about this, but I was able to see a seed that was planted in my life 23 years ago when I was born, um, where my aunt and uncle, my, my parents never went to church. My parents never went to, I, at 17, I seen them go to an Easter service one time. They never went to church, but I had an aunt and uncle <clears throat> who thought that it was so important to have God in my life mm -hmm. that they drove from the city they lived in to the city I was at and took me to another city to make sure I had church in my life. Mm -hmm. And being able to see the seeds that came from that, the, the, the growth that came from that seed that they planted into my life, to be able to look back and just be so thankful because the things that I did go through, the times that I did want to be alive, I was able to look back at that seed now and go, you know, had it not been for what they did, had it not been for the seed that they planted in my life, I wouldn't be where I'm at now because I wouldn't have been able to get through any of what I went through without God. Nothing. Nothing. But God, but, but God, but God. God will do tremendous things in your life if you let him. And if you, you may not always get to see the, the fruition of your seed, but if you will let God use you, and that's something I, that Sam talked about last week. I, I have struggled a long time with my identity with God. But I'm at the point in my life right now that I don't have all my stuff together. But God's still using me. Mm -hmm. But God's still using me. Mm -hmm. And 
if you will just allow God to plant those seeds. Even if you don't get to see the fruition, I'm telling you, God's working. Mm -hmm. You just got to be that, that willing vessel. You have to be that willing vessel. But my, my big thing today is I, I want everybody to understand that you do not have to walk in shame like I did. I walked in shame for a long time because I didn't know what the Bible said about me. I didn't know that, you know what, God covered you. There's nothing you can do that can pull you from God's love. Mm -hmm. And if you read the Bible time and time again, Paul, um, David, yeah, David, David did a lot of things. But guess what? God still used him. If, if you would just look into your Bible and just, just read a little bit about the God that you serve and just, just understand he doesn't use perfect people. It's, it's never been a perfect world. We, we've never been perfect people. We're all sinners saved by grace. And so where you're at in your life, you can walk free of that chain and let God use you where you're at with the people you're surrounded in, mm -hmm. in the church that you're plugged into. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. God can still move in it. Mm -hmm. That's what I have to say.